In the worst disaster in British sporting history, 94 Liverpool soccer fans have been crushed to death during an FA Cup semi-final. The tragedy began when non-ticket holders were allowed to pour into the stadium at Sheffield, chosen as neutral ground for the critical match against Nottingham Forest. Most victims were children and young people trapped against high security wire fencing. When the game started, thousands of ticket holders were still outside the ground in Sheffield, caught in the crush. Many began pushing forward, anxious because they were missing the action inside. It was then the police made the fateful decision to open double gates to ease the crush. They were worried things had become so out of control people would be badly injured. But sadly, that decision only moved the problem inside to an even more crowded area. Crowds surged forward, but those right at the very front had nowhere to go. The massive steel fences designed to keep people off the ground at all costs made sure of that. I was against the bar right at the front, and when I was at the bar at the front, there was people, there was a, there was a gentleman on my, on my arm, and he said, you're choking me, you're choking me, and he just fell. Yeah. He just literally fell, and that was the last of him. It was, it was, it was... As is always the case with football games, lined along the fence were hundreds of children, the ones who'd got there early to get the very best vantage point, and many of them became the victims. The game was stopped after six minutes. The only way out for those in the crush was over the fence. At first, police tried to stop them coming over, but then it became clear it could be their only means of escape. Advertising signs were torn down and used as stretchers. Fans and police worked side by side to rush the injured to waiting ambulances. But for others, there was no hope. All around the ground, there were scenes of desperation as rescuers tried to revive crush victims. Others wandered around in shock. Back in the crush, spectators in the upper section of the stand dragged many to safety. The match was eventually abandoned. There was never any question of a restart. Inside their dressing rooms, the Liverpool and Nottingham Forest players watched the television stun as the death toll climbed from an early report of three dead, then to 40, then 50. Within two hours, the news came, over 90 dead. The decision to open the gates seems to be the reason for the surge inside the ground but police say they're not admitting full responsibility just yet. I'm unaware of any connection between the opening of the gate and, and the surge on the stand. The mangled crowd barriers still litter the ground tonight and hear evidence of how they eventually got most of the people out by breaking through the fence using wire cutters. The operation over, the police involved sat in a sort of stunned silence, many obviously still in shock. More than 200 people were taken to hospital. 120 of those are still being treated overnight. The English football clubs have worked hard over the past 18 months trying to improve their image. And even though this incident cannot be directly attributed to football hooligans, the game's reputation surely once again has plummeted. In Britain, Robert Penfold, National 9 News. Since English soccer was allowed to return to European competition after being banned over the 1985 Heysel Stadium disaster, that also involved Liverpool fans who were blamed for starting a riot in Brussels in which 39 people died. As the fortunate fans returned to the Hillsborough ground to mourn friends and family who had been killed only hours before, the shockwaves of the tragedy were being felt here in Australia. Former Liverpool player Craig Johnston played at the same ground exactly a year ago to the day. We will know when time clears, we will know an awful lot of the people that got killed there because the ones that stand right in the middle of the goal are the ones that are always there because they love it more than anybody else. The horror at Sheffield is but one disaster in which Liverpool fans have been involved. May 29, 1985, the game between Liverpool and Juventus at the Heysel Stadium in Brussels. At the end of the stand, where hundreds were still trapped, there was pandemonium. Those trying to escape, paying no heed to the injured underfoot. This time, it was football violence that resulted in 39 fans being crushed to death. It was a turning point for the sport, as authorities finally cracked down like never before on soccer's hooligans. I will not come against the football. I have finished with Liverpool now, I tell you. In the early 80s, soccer was in the limelight for all the wrong reasons as warfare between gangs turned the terraces into battle zones. But on the 11th of May 1985 in Bradford, Northern England, two and a half thousand fans ran for their lives as fire swept through a tinder-dry grandstand. 
56 lives were lost. And look at that. Oh, the poor man. Oh, this is awful. He'd come to watch the football. This is human tragedy. And now the Sheffield tragedy, posing not only a new set of problems for administrators, but proving few sports have been cursed like soccer. Mark Burrows.